clairvoyance, or as the intelligence agencies have renamed it, remote viewing, is the psychic ability to internally see and obtain information on a given target object, person, location, or event across both space and time. Mystics, shamans, yogis, meditators, out-of-body experiencers, near-death experiencers, psychedelic users, people under hypnosis, and naturally gifted psychics have all reported the ability of clairvoyance for centuries. More recently, however, experiments performed by the CIA, US Army, SRI, and pair laboratories suggest that given proper training, everyone is capable of cultivating this skill of inner vision. Adrian Cooper wrote, Remote viewing is, broadly speaking, a controlled shifting of awareness performed from the normal waking state of consciousness. Humans are all part of a collective mind existing beyond the limitations of physical space and time. Anyone who is focused into this dimension, plane, or state, which is a level of energy or vibration, either permanently or temporarily, can potentially project their consciousness anywhere within time or space in an instant. Remote viewing works, therefore, by means of the remote viewer projecting or tuning their consciousness into this spaceless and timeless aspect of the universe. The term remote viewing was coined in the early 1970s by Stanford Research Institute's physicists Russell Targ and Harold Putoff. In their experiments, one person, the agent, would travel to a distant location randomly selected by computer, while another person, the viewer, would attempt to clairvoyantly see and describe where the agent went. In Targ and Putoff's initial experiments, one Soviet psychic was consistently able to accurately describe several locations, sometimes before the agent arrived, and sometimes before the computer had even made the selection. Throughout 20 years of research, they carried out hundreds of successful tests using several different viewers and even demonstrated these feats on live television including on 60 Minutes and The Donahue Show. Russell Targ wrote, In these carefully controlled experimental tests spanning two decades, many different subjects sat in a windowless office, closed their eyes, and explored the world outside. These individuals were consistently able to experience and accurately describe distant scenes and events from coast to coast and even continent to continent in both present and future time. The SRI experiments demonstrated unequivocal evidence for extrasensory perception and the existence of the non-local mind outside the brain and body. The ability of human awareness to make remarkable connections apparently transcends the conventional limitations of time and space. One day in 1973, Targ and Putoff were contacted by Burbank, California Police Commissioner Pat Price, who had been closely following their work and wanted to help. Price said that he had been practicing clairvoyance for years and successfully using it in his police work to catch criminals. Whenever dispatch reported a crime, he would sit in his office, close his eyes, and psychically scan the city looking for someone matching the description. Once he pinpointed their location in his mind's eye, he would send out a car to check, and actually succeeded in catching several criminals this way. For Price's first informal experiment at SRI, Targ had him remotely view Putoff who was on vacation. Sitting together in the Stanford lab each day, using Putoff as the unwitting agent, Price described what he saw, recounting scenes of churches, market squares, and volcanic mountains, all very characteristic of Central America. When Putoff returned, he confirmed that his holiday was in Costa Rica, and he had indeed visited churches, markets, and mountains on the very days that Price remotely viewed them. Lynn McTaggart wrote, Price took over as chief remote viewer. Hal and Russ underwent nine trials with him, following their usual double-blind protocol of sealed target spots near Palo Alto, Hoover Tower, a nature preserve, a radio telescope, a marina, a toll plaza, a drive-in movie theater, an arts and crafts plaza, a Catholic church, and a swimming pool complex. Independent judges concluded that Price had scored seven hits out of the nine. In some cases, like the Hoover Tower, Price even recognized it and correctly identified it by name. Price was noted for his incredible accuracy. Through SRI, the CIA got wind of Price's skills and initiated the now declassified projects Grill Flame and Scanate in an attempt to clairvoyantly spy on sensitive targets. 
Price was given nothing but the latitude and longitude of a remote location and asked to describe all details that he could see. With unwavering confidence, Pat polished his glasses, sat back in his chair, closed his eyes, and began recounting what he saw. It was a military airfield, with a few buildings scattered around. There was a large eight-wheeled gantry set upon tracks, a big cluster of compressed gas cylinders at one end, and inside the buildings were masses of steel gores. Price then opened his eyes and drew pictures of the building layout, the cylinders, the gantry, and gores. When the results came back from CIA spy satellites and ground intel, it turned out that the target site was indeed a Soviet military airfield and nuclear testing area in Semipalatinsk, Kazakhstan. The building layout, cylinders, eight-wheeled gantry, and even the steel gores inside were all confirmed to be just as Price described. Sadly, Pat Price died in 1975, but Targ and Putov continued their remote viewing projects, and in 1978, met someone they later described as the greatest natural psychic ever to walk into our laboratory. U.S. Army Special Projects Intelligence Officer Joe McMoneagle. A highly decorated and esteemed soldier, Joe McMoneagle had survived a near-death experience and had many out-of-body experiences, which piqued his interest in remote viewing. He said the experience of leaving and looking down on his own body started him on a psychic journey and forever changed his metaphysics. For his first experiment at SRI, Joe was told only that he would be viewing a technological target within 100 miles of the San Francisco Bay Area, which is full of possible technological locations, such as military bases, airports, factories, power plants, cell towers, linear accelerators, radar installations, and radio telescopes. The actual target was the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, the famous hydrogen bomb research facility directed by Edward Teller. Without hesitation, Joe picked up his pencil and began drawing what he saw in his mind's eye. The multi-purpose laboratory complex segmented one-story buildings nearby, the six-story administration building, a T-shaped building, a cylindrical roofed building, and a large parking lot. When Joe's drawing was finished, it was independently deemed as 85% accurate. Dean Radin wrote, Joseph McMoneagle, remote viewer number one, in the U.S. Army's formerly top-secret project codenamed Grill Flame, Stargate, and other exotic names, McMoneagle has been repeatedly tested in numerous double-blind laboratory experiments and has been shown to have an ability to describe objects and events at a distance and in the future, sometimes in spectacular detail. In one experiment, all that McMoneagle knew was that a person he hadn't met before would be visiting a technological target at a certain time somewhere that could be reached within an hour's drive around Silicon Valley in Northern California. The number and range of possible technological targets that one can get to in a short drive around Silicon Valley is gigantic. As it turned out, the target that the person arrived at was a particle beam accelerator, and that's what McMoneagle drew. In perhaps his most impressive viewing session on record, Joe was given absolutely no feedback whatsoever about where the agent would be traveling and he was able to draw an astonishing resemblance, independently verified as 94% accurate. The target was a windmill farm in the foothills of Livermore Valley, and that's exactly what Joe drew. Multiple wind generators, rotating blades, with poles scattered amongst the hills, all connected in a grid. Lynn McTaggart wrote, Human beings, talented or otherwise, appear to have a latent ability to see anywhere across any distance. The most talented remote viewers clearly can enter some framework of consciousness, allowing them to observe scenes anywhere in the world. But the inescapable conclusion of their experiments is that anyone has the ability to do this if they are just primed for it, even those highly skeptical of the entire notion. Hal Putoff gathered together nine remote viewers in total, mostly beginners, with no track record as psychics, who performed in total over 50 trials. Again, an impartial panel of judges compared targets with transcripts of subject descriptions. The descriptions may have contained some inaccuracies, but they were detailed and accurate enough to enable the judges to directly match description with target roughly half the time, a highly significant result. In her 1995 CIA-funded evaluation of all remote viewing experiments conducted since 1970, 
Dr. Jessica Utz, concluded that, quote, Using the standards applied to any other area of science, it is concluded that psychic functioning has been well established. The statistical results of the studies examined are far beyond what is expected by chance. Arguments that these results could be due to methodological flaws in the experiments are soundly refuted. Effects of similar magnitude to those found in government-sponsored research at SRI and SAIC have been replicated at a number of laboratories across the world. Such consistency cannot readily be explained by claims of flaws or fraud. In addition to SRI's studies, Princeton University's Engineering Anomalies Research Laboratory also conducted 25 years of remote viewing research with 653 trials involving 72 participants, headed up by Dean of Engineering Robert John and psychologist Brenda Dunn. In a 2003 meta-analysis, they summarized their findings regarding the evidence for remote viewing. Their overall assessment showed with odds against chance of 33 million to 1 the results were definitely not due to luck or coincidence. John and Dunn concluded, quote, The overall results of these analyses leave little doubt, by any criterion, that the data contain considerably more information about the designated targets than can be attributed to chance guessing. Dean Radin wrote, In the 1980s, I worked on a top-secret psi research program for the U.S. government, now declassified. At the first research briefing I attended, I was shown examples of high-quality remote viewing obtained under exceptionally well-controlled circumstances. I asked in amazement, why is Psy still considered controversial by the scientific mainstream? Why not just conduct an experiment of 20 or 30 trials with this type of remote viewing skill? That ought to convince anyone that Psy is real. The answer, explained to me patiently by physicist Ed May, was simple. He said, you're making the rational man mistake. He meant that we usually assume science is a rational process, but it's not. The technical term for one form of this irrational phenomenon is the confirmation bias. This psychological quirk causes evidence supporting your beliefs to be perceived as plausible, and evidence challenging your beliefs to be perceived as implausible. Studies in social psychology have repeatedly demonstrated that journal reviewers invariably judge articles being submitted for publication according to their prior beliefs. Those who agree with the hypothesis tend to judge a paper reporting positive results as an excellent piece of work, and those who disagree judge the very same paper as a flawed failure. The former referees recommend publication, and the latter don't. The final decision is left up to the editor. So if the editor doesn't happen to agree with the paper's hypothesis, then there's a good chance it won't appear in the journal. And then the evidence doesn't exist, as far as the rest of the scientific community is concerned. The ability of remote viewing raises some interesting questions and serious objections regarding the scientific materialist paradigm. Traditionally, science has explained the miracle of sight as a purely material process taking place in the eyes and brain. However, this obviously conflicts with the research done at SRI and PEAR. Anyone trained in remote viewing, or anyone who has experienced out-of-body travel and witnessed looking down upon their own sleeping body, would have to agree that there must be something much more mystical and immaterial responsible for vision. Life magazine once featured Rosa Kulashova, a Russian girl who could read perfectly clearly using her fingertips. The Russian Academy of Science tested her repeatedly under controlled conditions and concluded that her abilities were genuine. Italian doctor Cesare Lombroso wrote about a blind patient who could see using her earlobe. Harvard doctor David Eisenberg even published an article about two Chinese girls who can read using their armpits. Michael Talbot wrote, Despite our unwavering conviction that we see with our eyes, reports persist of individuals who possess eyeless sight, or the ability to see with other areas of their bodies. Recently, David Eisenberg, MD, a clinical research fellow at the Harvard Medical School, published an account of two school-aged Chinese sisters in Beijing who can see well enough with the skin in their armpits to read notes and identify colors. In Italy, the neurologist Cesare Lombroso studied a blind girl who could see with the tip of her nose and the lobe of her left ear. In the 1960s, the prestigious Soviet Academy of Science investigated a Russian peasant woman named Rosa Kuleshova 
who could see photographs and read newspapers with the tips of her fingers, and pronounced her abilities genuine. Now because every part of a hologram contains the whole, every part of the body, the hand, toe, knee, has the ability to pass frequency patterns to the brain, which it transforms into holograms that we can see. This means that people really do have eyes in their backsides. I have heard some people speak of being able to see 360 degrees when they have entered altered states of consciousness that make them more attuned to these senses by withdrawing their focus from the five-sense consensus reality. All this is perfectly explainable from the holographic perspective.